So, I have me a generator. It's a little bit heavier than I like to move by myself. And it's not very often that I have somebody that is handy to help me move it. When the need arises, I have to retrieve it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount wheels on the brackets right down here. Okay? And I'm going to put a foot on the other side to level it off after I've got the wheels on. There's my wheels. Here's hardware I'm probably going to use. I may not use all of it, but I'm for sure going to use this strip of wood, these two pieces of wood as a guide. This is going to invert. It's going to sit on the bottom of this piece right here, this cross member. This shaft is going to go through. I'm going to take these two pieces of wood put them here. I'm going to glue those as the guide. When I'm all done, I'm going to glue... When I'm all done putting these two pieces on this end as well, gluing them in, I'm going to put these two as caps over top in a manner similar to this to keep this axle from coming out of its groove. And then, I'm going to put the wire, the nuts these are the end nuts, the silver ones with the rounded end. See how they're kind of rounded? Alright. So these are my flat wash, flat nuts. Put these on here as spacers. Put washers against that. Now I'm going to put the end nut on. The wheel is going to go between the washers. I'll show you later. But first, we got to glue. Okay, so these pieces are just temporarily clamped in just so I can line things up. What I need to do is take one piece off, but leave one on so I don't lose my alignment. Take one piece off. I'm going to smear glue all over this. Tacky glue. bristles of this brush, just dipping them in a cup that's off camera, and I'm going to actually just spread this around as evenly as I can to get the most bond on a lot of surface area holding this. I'm not going all the way to the edges because when I put the clamp on it's going to squeeze some of it, so I'm going to stay back a little bit from the edge. Not much, just a little bit. Okay, I've got good culture. Now I want a little bit of an overlap, just a little bit because I'm going to trim the end later and it'll all be flush. But I don't need much overlap, just a smidge. And I'm going to butt this up against that. And put a squeezy clamp on. Good. I'm straight. I'm going to leave that to tack for a minute so that it doesn't slip when I pull the other one off. Okay, so I'm going to pull the other one off. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the tacky glue on there, spread it around, and I'm going to stick it right back on that. Brushing my cup of water off screen. Brush towards the middle. And then down. Good. 
move it around a little bit so it smears on the other piece. Slide it up to just a smidgen of overlap. Bring it over to the shaft, flush again so that there's no wiggle room. Now, with the event to tack up, so I need these clamps to do the other end, I don't have a whole crack of clamps. Alright, so I put the same guide pieces on the opposite end, so that the shaft can't flip forward or backwards in relation to the generator. This groove right here keeps this from going back and forth. Now, put the tacky glue in and held it with these little clips long enough for it to set. It's not completely dried, but it was set and would hold in place defying gravity. And then I put a piece of scrap wood over the top of each pair and put C clamps down with a fair amount of pressure enough to squeeze the excess glue out of the ends as you can see. So now we're going to leave that to dry a little longer. <clears throat> okay, so these are going to be the part that covers over and keeps this from hopping out of its slot. So we're going to re-slot this just like that. Still no wiggle, just like we want. Make sure it's all the way in. I want enough clearance. Enough clearance for the shaft to go through. So I'm going to measure that, which is 3 and 8 inch. I also need enough room for one, two, three nuts and two washers. So the nuts are half inch deep. So three of those is an inch and a half. And these are a quarter combined. So I need an inch and three quarters plus three and an eighth. Makes it four and three eighths. With four and three eighths inches sticking out. And I'm going to go four and a half give myself a little extra. One and a half will be right there. Four and a half. So now I'm going to put my tacky glue all over here. I'm going to seat this down on top and clamp it all together in one big sandwich. Again, I want to stay a little bit away from the edges, but I 
would like to be kind of close to him. glue down in any low spots in the wood, which I pre-sanded, yeah, I would say, and it looks edible. And now, I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to clamp that. And I don't want clamp indentations in my wood. So I'm going to put my piece of scrap back over the top. I'm going to get the clamp to where it just has enough tension to be snug, but not tight. Then I'm going to position my other one. And then I'm going to fine adjust. While the glue is still gooey and while there's not heavy pressure on the clamps. Just where it touches. Now, I want the flats of my clamps, the seats, to be as close to center as I can eyeball this way. And as deep in left and right as possible from the side edges. So I'm going to position those. And then I want this to be mostly squared. This is going to be out of sight. It's not going to be visible. So it doesn't have to be beautiful. But you do want it kind of close. So now as I'm doing this, the clamp wants to torque out just a little bit out of its own position. So I have to reposition the clamp as well. So I want this end to hang over a little bit. Because if you remember, I'm going to trim that. I want these edges to be roughly centered from the edges, even amount on both sides. And then I'm going to gradually add some tension to these clamps. About a quarter turn at a time. Until I feel a great deal of tension. By doing it in small amounts, that avoids having the piece shift again. That way I won't have to readjust another time still. So you want to turn them about even and keep about the same amount of pressure on each as you do so. Hold the back of the clamp from rotating as you turn the lever. Otherwise, the clamp will turn and it'll pull the whole piece. And now I'm putting heavy pressure on it. Check to make sure nothing got all out of whack on me. It's important now to be right where you want it to be. And now we're squeezing until the ooze all comes out. <clears throat> okay, that's as tight as that's going to go. Without stripping the threads on my clamp screws. And I'm going to show you that my glue is all oozing out from all of my seams along the back, along this side, and along the end. And that part is done. Now we're going to turn this around and we're going to do the same thing on this end. Okay, so skipping ahead a little bit, uh, what I've done, the pieces are clamped as shown earlier. The shaft is right through where it's supposed to be. What I did was I took the two golden nuts 
the ones that were flat on both ends, not domed, I took all the way down to the edge of the uh, bracket here. I did the same thing with the other side. And then using two wrenches, I held this one still while I tightened this one up against it. That way this locks on. It cannot move anymore. I did the same thing with this side. I took this down just touching the edge of my plywood frame here and then spun this one down up against that. I held the inner one still with a wrench, put a wrench on the outer one and tightened it against this one really hard. And then I insert a washer on the outside of each of those. I slid the wheel assembly on through the axle hole put a washer on the outside and then I put my domed nut on I went just to the point where it just touched the washer okay and then I backed the nut off about four threads four turns I put two drops of super glue on and immediately put that back to where it was touching the washer the super glue will act as a thread locker so that this doesn't slide off that allows the wheel to sit on the axle and spin without hugging the shaft or hugging the nuts. I did the same thing over here. I backed this off about four turns away from the washer. I kept the washer flush with the actual wheel bearing hub assembly. Four turns back, four threads, two drops of super glue, and then tighten this back down before the super glue could uh, solidify. That acts as a thread locker. Now, these are not coming loose unless you put a wrench on them. And then, just for quickie, I drilled a hole on one corner here, and then on the opposite corner here, I'm going to mount it just to test and see if it lines up. I'm going to put a bolt through here, a bolt through here, And then one bolt is going to go through this hole. One is going to go. One bolt is going to go through that hole. One will go through that hole, and that'll see if it sits and if everything lines up with my other marks. Okay, so there's the generator. There's the pieces of hardware we got to uh, make the foot underneath. And the handle up above. We've already got the wheels on it from before. So stand up from underneath. Put this right in there. Yeah, you're gonna have to hold it up because if we set it down on it, it'll just roll. It's off a little bit, but not enough that it's going to hurt anything for it to be like that. You know, like I said, once you put that cushion under there, that'll make up half that difference. Yeah. Okay, so there's that one in place. <laughs> Turn that tab around. I need, nope. It'll go, it'll come when I when you get it on there. I'm just sticking on the pipe for now. Since this goes on the outside, though. No. You want run it underneath. Oh, it's all hanging underneath, so that when you pull it out, we go for a second. So that when you pull it up, that's dropped down right there. You'll see what I say. Oh, I, I know what you mean. 
They're stronger being pulled against than pushed against. These things are. And working out this way, that's well, going to make the fulcrum down. We ain't gonna, you ain't going to be able to get in the fucker with a bolt or not. Mm. You just have to do it that way. Back here. Just a little bit of the rubber attached. Yeah. Plus, this is tweaked out a little bit. Well, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it being that it stays in so that when it's running, it doesn't yeah. creep its way forward. Yeah. But that you can manually still get that. Lifts up. Plenty of leverage. Plenty of foot. Mm -hmm. So... So, put a little rubber up underneath there. Not on this, but on this, I think. Well, I'll see this one should be used for. I figured you just make a loose loop to where it hangs. You know? Yeah, but I'm talking about when you put a pick up. Yeah. Have a little rubber catch there. That way it doesn't eat through the paint on either one and then start getting rust through on it. That'd take 15 years for that to you know. Yeah. The improvement will be fixing those last couple things. That's good enough. That'll work. Yeah. 